Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to try a waterfall painting, but we're going to do it with nothing but the knife. It should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these and you're looking forward to seeing this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today with the palette knife. <laughs> Imagine that. I've got some blue and white, and I put a little bit of clear gel in here. And unlike regular painting, I'm going to be adding clear gel to the paint quite a bit, especially in the background. Probably not so much in the foreground. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this paint right around. I'm thinking about, you know, a little forest, a little background, a gentle waterfall, nothing crazy, nothing like ginormous, like a mountain or anything. There. Now I'm just adding what feels like a little bit of background stuff. That's all it is, background stuff. Now what's fun about this palette knife is you got the small edge and the big edge. And once you get into doing the trees, the small edge works really good. You get these little squares and you kind of use the point of that small edge. Works out real well. Cool. Place a little bit on this side. This is just like misty tree outlines. And we'll put our trees inside of this, but you have to do this stuff first. You can't just necessarily expect it to blend exactly the way you would wish it would. You have to do these color changes to get it to blend. It is wet and you'll get some blending, but it's not like a brush. There, so everything is a little more slippery than normal, so that's at least good. There, because with the palette knife, the problem generally is that it gets too chunky. I like that. Woo, looking good already. Also, you'll be scraping a lot of paint off of the canvas as you go. You know, you put it on really thick and you can scrape it off. Just stick it here on your palette. That's my leftover sky. Don't waste it because palette knife painting can take up a little more paint. So don't be throwing anything out. Just sort of stick it up here. There, got a slightly darker tone for right up here. Actually, we should start seeing, well, no, I was going to say let's start seeing some greens, but how about if we don't do that yet? Let's do our browns and blacks first. I think a little brown snuck in here. And then we'll do our greens on top. That's better. Now I'm going with another layer, just slightly darker. And the reason I'm not just blowing through this really quick is because I feel like it's important to show you guys that you have to build all of these tones in. And look how I let it run out as we get down here. It makes it mistier at the bottom. Kind of cool. That's my other tone right there. So now let's darken it again. Yeah, this is super fun. And boy, if you struggle with color mixing, this is this is an exercise for you. Maybe an exercise in patience. I don't know. But hey, okay, that looks halfway decent. Not too vibrant, so that black in there is kind of nice. Just a little bit on the on the knife. I was about to say on the brush, but that that's an honest mistake, right? Mm -hmm. If I do that a couple times today, I'm sure you'll understand. Just to put a little bit down here like this. Okay, and wipe off that knife using the small edge. We'll kind of just bring it out. You can stipple with your knife and kind of get different little effects. So you want to use as many different brush strokes as possible, right? Just like in, in regular painting. Knife painting is it's not so much its own thing. It's very much everything's pretty pretty much the same. It really is. Now we're changing gears just a little bit. <laughs> now what I'm going to try to do is focus on these big shapes of the trees. Not so much getting wrapped up in all the individual layers of trees that are in here. So I'm going just along the outside and then as I go in I'll think about those different layers. Hope that makes sense. It's kind of just a way to break it up in my mind. You can do it any different way. It doesn't really matter. Cool. Lots and lots and lots of sap green today. I love sap green. It's a very transparent color. It works really well for a lot of things, doesn't it? Cool. All right, I'm liking this. Of course, when I mix up my colors, it's very marbled. See that? And shoot, I'll grab some of this leftover paint and toss that in. We got all sorts of pretty things happening in it. See, it lightens that color. It's not actually black, it's just dark. Good. Now, to tell you the truth, we could just 
block in everything right here. I've, I've already done a, a very simple sketch. I don't think I mentioned it even. Well, there it is. I did a simple sketch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some water here. So for the water, I, I generally just kind of pull it down. I have a sketch in here of some rocks or stuff. I'll just paint right over them. It's just way, way too difficult to try to paint around it. There's simply no, no need. Let me grab some umber, some black. Oh, green in there too by accident. I guess that's okay. And work at getting some reflections. I think we need some color, very much gray. So at this point, but that's okay. I was kind of planning this gray for the most part in here. But toward the foreground, I would love to start just adding in some color. So let's work at that. Now here's where it really gets interesting. I'm just gonna take the knife and draw it right across and wipe it off and continue to do this several times until we smooth that water out. And you can smooth it out pretty well with this knife. You know what it needs, just a little dark. I have a couple of dark stripes, there we go, in the water. Looks like little ripples or something. And there you have it. Pretty cool though, isn't it? Keep that knife clean though. There. Cool. And that is about all it takes to get a decent little water effect. <laughs> there, you can play around with it if you want, but I would definitely not go overboard or it'll get muddy. Cool. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and pull down with the small edge of my knife very lightly. You have to use a lot of paint, see that amount of paint? And a very light touch, otherwise it'll just mix with this green that we've got underneath. But you see how you can just pull it right down and it creates that beautiful waterfall effect. Wipe your knife, reload. You don't have to go terribly quick at this. See that? A nice slow pull will get it done. You don't have to go down on all of them so you can kind of change it up somewhat. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that looks very waterfall-like, which is not bad considering we painted it with a knife, right? Not, not bad. I'm great with some texture. Obviously, it's a knife painting. Texture is welcome. Maybe a little more white on this little guy right there. Okay, is that enough? Probably. Probably. Okay, take some of our, this is just some blue and white I had going up here. I might just try to add a little more something in here. A little more color variation. Cool. Yeah, maybe a little more up in here. I kind of like that. It adds that extra extra detail. All right, now we just need to blur the bottom, which shouldn't be too hard. Just glop on a little bit of paint, like this. Wipe your knife. Maybe just use the back end here and go in some little circles. There, see, pick up that color around it just blend. Wipe the knife though before you go back into the light area. Otherwise you'll you'll just take that dirty color and drag it all over the place. Cool. And then you can build up a layer in that mist if you want to just by adding a little more white and then blending it in a little less. Almost looks like we could use a, an additional ripple or two, doesn't it? Maybe we'll do that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add in some light, kind of reflected light on the back of a tree that I just put in two seconds. There, see? Just didn't take a whole lot. I'll grab some random mud. Sort of add that to the right hand side and then we'll throw a highlight, of course but it's very dark, so this will help bring out some of that darkness, or remove some of the darkness, I guess. And then just grab any kind of a, a light color. I just grabbed a yellow ochre, white, and blue, it's okay. 
Yeah, let's see, I'll try that. There we go. Nice. It's very pretty, isn't it? And you just use a tip of your knife to kind of work out these little areas like that, little root areas. And we'll see how much we actually show there at the bottom. I don't really know. Okay, looks good. And then maybe just a branch or two. I don't want them terribly bright, but maybe just a branch or two coming off of this tree. Could be really cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in kind of a, I don't know, a visual interest area. This is a nice tree that has a little more color than the others. Now we still have not highlighted the one on the left, and I've got to do that. And when I do, I may end up messing this one up, and I'd like this one to be in front. So we may have, might have to take this color and just stick it in. It'll take an extra two seconds, and I don't really care. It's just not a big deal. Now right over here, maybe? Yeah, right here. Just a little. You can kind of, oh, you can kind of do your comma strokes with the tip of that knife. Even when you're painting with a knife, you can't get away from those crazy comma strokes, can you? <laughs> there, you thought we were going to be able to get away without them. Nope. There, nice. Good comma strokes at the end. We should probably do that up here. I like that. Okay. As we go down, I'll just darken it with a little more of our sap green. Very nice. Even a little touch of blue wouldn't hurt. Kind of just get something that's a little darker yet. Time to squeeze out some more paint, isn't it? <laughs> there. Use up a little more when you're knife painting, don't you? Not a whole lot. I mean, it's not terrible, but you do use up a little more. There, nothing too dark here toward the bottom. I think that would kind of mess up this effect. Now this is a classic case of, you know, you think you got it in just right, and then you paint more, and then you realize you want to make a change. So I think I want to break this waterfall area up. After I, it was looking pretty good to me, but then after I started getting more stuff in, I just looked at it more and more. I felt like it needed more rock showing underneath, or more, not even necessarily rock, but, well, it is rock. It's, but the rock that is flowing over, you can just see through it. It's not so opaque. It was looking a little too opaque to me. And I think that this will help it look more transparent. There. I like that better already. There, see that? Just lightly dragged down. Super easy to, to change. But I just wanted to show you that things don't always have to stay. You can really make some adjustments as you go. It's not a big deal. It makes it look a little more shallow. And it doesn't look like there's nearly so much water coming down. And I just think it looks more natural that way. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and add on a lot of flowers. Just by touching with the tip of the knife. That's all. You can kind of round off some of them. You don't have to on all of them, that's for sure. You see I've got just a nice soft purple color mixed and I'll probably be mixing up quite a bit more. <laughs> all right. The only thing that can go wrong here, just about the only thing, is that you space them all evenly, which is something that's easily done, you know? It's something you gotta watch for. So right there's about four flowers in that clump. See that? But it's good to have just a few clumps to break it up. You don't want like little stars everywhere. That would be a little bit weird. <laughs> Maybe one right there. Good. Let's see there. So just kind of taking my time, placing them where they, they look good. Getting good clumps. Speaking of clumps, let's skip down to here and we'll put leaves in. So this is just kind of the beginning phases of all of this. And there's actually not a ton of paint down. I scraped off some of it and see that? There's even some of the canvas showing through. So this is working out real well. You wanna make sure that you're not getting too much muddying in these flowers. You wanna glop it on and then reload it, wiping it each time. One of the last things we're gonna do up here is add just a little highlight to this tree. 
I've already put kind of a mid-tone down. Now I'm just very lightly touching on some highlight, kind of leaving it thick and gloppy because it is, after all, it's a palette knife painting. We can leave it thick and gloppy and kind of get away with it. There, in fact, I think people pay extra for that, right? <laughs> yeah, and then occasionally you can kind of touch in a comma stroke as well, just to break it up and give you a couple of different textures in that same tree. There, but you see how it's a different color. It's more white. There's not so much yellow, very little yellow. See, this one has yellow. And you see the difference? I like that. So that way, we, it's not all the same. And I think that just makes a difference. It makes it cool. Put a slightly darker color just by barely touching the canvas. That paint, you just scoop up a little on the end. And as you drag it, it'll just grab the high places here. And it'll come right off without, without becoming muddy. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, our DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.